afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Excuse the husky voice, the weather and the, the fall and the new PLT are to blame for this. Anyway, my uh, presentation this afternoon is part of, a, of my uh, dissertation entitled Social Vulnerability and Willingness to Pay for Adaptation to Climate Change and Variability of Farming Households in Trimangas in the And uh, just to give you a background, we know that uh, climate change is one of the biggest challenges faced by society today. Uh, and it will, have, it will affect everyone but these effects will not be uniform across communities, sectors, regions, and nations. Why? Because climate-induced changes in temperature and precipitation vary across geographical areas, and the distribution of resources and wealth is unequal. So who will suffer most from climate change? Poor countries and the, people, and the poor people due to their present exposure and economic sensitivity and social sensitivity climate change. Agriculture and the poor farmers rely on the sector. Adaptation is an important strategy in reducing short-run and long-run vulnerability to climate change. Farmers, particularly those in developing countries like the Philippines, must adopt the climate change to reduce its negative impacts and exploit its benefits. Actually, farmers in Africa and Asia have been adjusting to climate change by employing autonomous adaptation strategies their individual capacity, farmers do adopt. However, given the current vulnerabilities and expected magnitude of climate change impacts, these autonomous adaptation efforts will most likely fall short of the necessary adaptation. So the individual adaptation uh, efforts of farmers uh, are definitely not enough to address the problem. So that's plan for policy-guided adaptation is important. What's the Philippine scenario? The Philippines, as we know, is highly vulnerable to climate change due to its geographical location and level of economic development. The country is situated in a region where most tropical cyclones are formed, has one of the long longest coastlines in the world, making it susceptible to sea level rise. And the trend of increasing temperatures, precipitation, etc., has also has already been observed in the Philippines. Like for example, Increasing the mean annual temperature, increasing average rainfall and rainy and rainy days, <coughs> increasing the number of typhoons, and three, in fact, the three of the five strongest cycles in the country occurred only uh, a decade ago. And agriculture is an important sector in the Philippines. Contributes 12 to 13 percent of our GDP. It employs about 35 percent of our labor force. And majority is a major source of income and livelihood among rural communities. And climate change and variability has been significantly affecting Philippine agriculture. Episodes of El Nino and La Nina caused some of the worst weather related disasters in the country. The biggest fall in the volume of production in agriculture occurred in 1982 and 1983. Um, in 1997 and 1988, the years when El Nino, the country was strongest. In 2006, along with tropical cyclones that entered the country's area of responsibility affected at least 11 million Filipinos and inflicted damage amounting to almost 20 billion pesos. And unfortunately, climate change impacts are expected to worsen in the future. Farming households more than anyone else will carry the heavier burden of climate change impacts. Given this vulnerability, are farmers willing to pay to reduce that vulnerability? By how much do farmers value a plant adaptation program to climate change that specifically address their needs? So this study addresses these questions. More specifically, the objectives are to describe farmers' knowledge, attitudes regarding climate change variability and climate change adaptation program. Estimate farmers' willingness to pay for a plan adaptation program for climate variability and change, determine the factors that influence this willingness to pay, and identify relevant policy recommendations based on the results. The methodology for the, the study site is in Dumangas, you later on I will explain why. The sampling procedure, stratified random sampling is divided uh, 
the municipalities divided to four strata, uh, five, there are 520 farmer respondents. Data collection method is household confusion valuation survey. And the method of analysis is descriptive, historical regression analysis, parametric mean and median really estimate. Just, uh, let me just give you some uh, definitions about uh, certain uh, 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 terms that I will be using here. Economic valuation, what I did actually is an economic valuation, refers to the assignment of monetary values to non market and goods and services. Since an, a, 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 the plan, a plan adaptation program is not in place yet, so it's a non market and service, and uh, if we want to, to uh, value it, uh, we, we use uh, economic valuation. And state of preference method is a method that draws data from uh, people's responses to hypothetical questions rather than observations of real world choices. So for example, if uh, you buy a car from the market, there is a price. And the amount that you pay for the car is your willingness to pay for the car. But in a non-marketed good, there is no price. So you do not know how much uh, are people willing to pay for that. So we ask them it's directly using stated preference methods. The contingent valuation is a stated preference technique and a survey-based methodology for existing values, people, place, and goods, services, and amenities. So these are the steps to identify the changes in quantity uh, and or quality to be valued. It's very important in the contingent valuation uh, method because the individual has, has to know uh, what is he or she paying for, what are the benefits of that good. So if for this study, these are the benefits brought about for the climate change adaptation program for agriculture. So the DEN are actually uh, came out with a, a Philippine strategy for climate change adaptation in 2010. This is for the period 2010-2022. And uh, there is a portion there for agriculture, specifically for Visayas. And the uh, adaptation program that I included here yeah, in this study was adopted from that uh, strategy, from that document. Identify these values to be estimated. These are the values of farming households. Selection of the mode of collecting data. It's a face-to-face -face interview method that was employed. There are lots. You can do telephone interviews, but this is the most. Uh, this will face-to-face -face interview will generate the highest response rate. Choosing the sample size. The sample size is 520. Sufficient for close-ended contingent valuation surveys. The recommended uh, sample size is actually. 500 to 1,000 to for you to generate a very good result. Design the information component of the survey instrument or the CV scenario. Uh, this includes a description of the item to be valued, the explanation of the method of provision, how is it going to be provided, um, the payment vehicle and the decision rule, and the time frame of the payment. This information represented to the farmers using three payment cards. Uh, this information followed closely the Philippine strategy for adaptation. The first information card said, uh, included the scientific information of climate change, its causes, and possible impacts. The second information card uh, gave or provided information about the characteristics of the study area, the exposure to climate change and extreme weather events, and the effects of climate change on farming. The third uh, information card is the current situation or the status quo and the proposed adaptation program, the mode of provision, and the benefits of the program to the farmers. The other information provided in the questionnaire is the payment vehicle. In this case, uh, the payment or the fees will be collected through the respondent's electricity bill. Uh, fees are proposed to be paid monthly for five years. And uh, the Method of management is the fund will be managed by the Climate Change Adaptation Fund for agriculture and NGO established specifically for that purpose. And I include the cheap talk. Cheap talk is uh, you remind the respondents that there are competing uses for their income so that they'll uh, provide you with a truthful and correct 
value for the service. So then decide the contingent valuation question that will elicit the respondent's willingness to pay. Uh, in, this, in my case, the payment card or letter was chosen as the response format for the willingness to pay. Some would have referendum type method, like a voting method. Um, the final payment letter showed 21 values from 0 to 200 there. I will show you the payment card. The respondents were asked to take the values they were, should, they were surely willing to pay starting from the beginning of the letter and to mark with exit values that were surely not willing to pay starting from the back bottom of the letter. Develop auxiliary questions to prove that provide covariance for statistical analysis this is for the regression analysis. So variables elicited through auxiliary questions included reasons for respondents we are aware not willing to pay, respondents views of the scenario presented, attitudes, opinions, knowledge, and uses of climate change adaptation and demographic characteristics. The pretest implemented survey, uh, pretest is conducted, a small number of respondents in the barangays that were not included in the sample. The purpose of the pretest uh, was to um, uh, correct or uh, to make to fine tune, I mean, to fine tune the questionnaire. Conduct statistical analysis, factors affecting willingness to pay. Uh, for the factors affecting willingness to pay, I uh, use interval regression analysis because the data generated is in the form of intervals. And then mean and median double uh, willingness to pay values were estimated using parametric methods. And uh, evaluation function for this study is expressed in log linear and log log form. Uh, that means uh, we express all the values in uh, uh, natural logarithms. And the description of variables are as well. are the variables in the So I have uh, 12 covariates education, farm experience, household income, farm size, number of extreme events experienced by the farmer that cost losses to their farming. The dummy for farm training, whether they have undergone climate field school. Climate field school is a 12, um, 12 week uh, training program for farmers that teaches them how to incorporate uh, uh, climate data into farming and uh, use that for decision making. So this is unique for the area of the Mongas. It is one of the it is the first, and I, I don't know, the only uh, municipality that has climate field school. And then I have dummy for the source of water or source of irrigation. Uh, and then, ah, dummy for irrigation, whether or not, uh, whether the farm is irrigated or not. And then ownership dummies, and then dummy for access to credit, and dummy, dummy for knowledge for climate change and then dummy for perception of risk. And these are the expected signs. Uh, so then uh, median and mean WTP were calculated using the, the formula. The results, uh, this is just a profile of the mangas. Topography uh, is a uh, plain, it's a coastal town. There are several rivers passing through the municipality seven. Located at the tail end of the Halaor River. Halaor River is uh, the biggest uh, river and the source, major source of irrigation in Iloilo. As type 1 climate, uh, Landera is 12,870 hectares. Uh, allocated to agriculture 56%, aquaculture 35%, and so on. Uh, it's, these are the climate change uh, issues being confronted by the Mongas. Uh, it's a coastal town, so it's threatened by sea level rise and coastal erosion in the years to come. About 80% of the town is flood prone because it serves as a catch basin for the Hadaor River, like, like a delta, no? And then uh, it's also prone to drought because being at the tail end of the of the Hadaor River, it receives very little uh, irrigation during dry season. And uh, since 80% of the town, that's the majority of the farms suffer from the luxury economic ice cuts due to insufficient supply of irrigation. This is the map, and that is uh, located in Malay, Ilo. And this is the 
situation in Pumangas. The green lines are the river network traversing in the territory, and on the side here is the Halao River, and uh, this is One here is already the Gimara Street, so see. So for the socio-economic profile of respondents, majority are male, female, mean age is 54 years old, literacy rate is 99.6%, married respondents, 79% average household size is 4, average household monthly income is 48,800. So this is for the knowledge, perception, and attitude. If you look at the top three problems faced by the country, respondents believe these are economic problems. Poverty, economic problems, and governance. Top three environmental problems, deforestation, climate change, and flooding. But uh, if you look at the economy and the environment trade off, they believe that the economy is more important than the environment. It's more important than the environment. The environment is more important than the economy. So more people believe that the economy is more important than the environment, 68%. Uh, uh, these are the number of aware of farmers according to extent of awareness on climate change. If, so they were asked uh, whether they've heard about climate change, 72% replied yes. But if you look at the rating of their own extent of awareness, you will see that very few are knowledgeable. So they've heard about it, but very few knows uh, a lot about it. They're very few are knowledgeable about it. So these are the number of farmers supporting observed changes in climate variables through the years. So here you can see that uh, they observe majority, 61%, observe change in temperature, but up specifically increase in temperature, change in rainfall pattern, compare that to less number of uh, a relatively number a less number of farmers believe that there are changes in frequency of typhoons, intensity of typhoons, and frequency of flooding, frequency of drought, and intensity of drought. Um, and in terms of riskiness, um, in general an overwhelming majority of the respondents believe that climate change is risky, very risky to farming. Uh, but if you look at the change in rainfall, but if you look at the, the responses per uh, climate condition, more farmers believe that frequency of El Nino or drought, typhoons, and flooding are risky to, farm, to farming compared to change in rainfall pattern and increase in temperature. So, and if, uh, that, this is confirmed by their rating of extent of riskiness. So here it shows that frequency of El Nino is really, for them, is the most risky climate uh, variable, followed by typhoon flooding, then increased temperature, temperature, and then changing the rainfall pattern. Farmers' opinion selected climate change issues. So the, the rating here is one for strongly agree, five for strongly disagree. So if you look at the, the first statement, the government should raise more funds to deal with the country's environmental problems. They agree to that. Uh, they also agree that the government should first invest in helping people before it spends money on climate change adaptation. And then, but they strongly disagree that the government should increase taxes to finance programs that would lessen the impacts of climate change. So, uh, and here this is the number of farmers' level of awareness regarding climate change. This is also already the result after the contingent valuation survey when they were given the, the, the scientific knowledge about climate change. And they were asked all the information were new to me. Only 190, uh, only 190 respondents or 36%. I know some of the information presented and already all the information presented. So this actually confirms the earlier finding that uh, majority of them have heard about it, but very few are knowledgeable about climate change. So now for the result of the contingent valuation survey. So here in the contingent valuation survey, you have to screen um, valid willingness to pay responses and invalid willingness to pay responses. 
those farmers who did not who answered no to the willingness to pay question uh, were asked why are they will not willing to pay. Some of them answered that they don't they don't trust the government, they don't believe that the program is is uh, will work. These are invalid willingness to pay uh, responses because these are protest responses. So they are not being included in the contingent valuation survey, which means that uh, these people, they have uh, probably, the, even if they have the capacity to pay, they don't have a value or they really don't like to, to place a value on the service. So we include only those people with value willing to pay. For that, uh, here we have uh, those who are willing to pay, pay for blood of the patients, 391, and uh, the, the, those who are not willing where, where uh, 139, sorry, and that would, so valid responses would be 59, so total of, uh, so those, uh, the number of uh, respondents included in the interval regression analysis is total 450. So what are the reasons for meeting us to pay? Believe the plan to manage the fund is good, believe that state that payment is reasonable, they're concerned with the risks posed by climate change and the amount of state on that some are not sure if they can pay what they want to pay. So these are the characteristics of the farmers with uh, willingness to pay. So if you look at those, uh, so generally uh, farmers who are willing to pay are younger than those who are not willing to pay. They have higher educational attainment, average educational attainment is higher, and they have a bigger farm size. And then in terms of experience, uh, those who are willing to pay are the less experienced farmers. And then uh, for the farm training here, you will see that the climate field school, uh, almost all those experienced climate field school uh, were willing to pay. And here you see that uh, those who had irrigation but it's almost the same, it's not really that uh, remarkable. And, uh, so. so these are the projects included in the proposed program. Relocations are shortened. Relocation for people affected by sea level rise, training and provision of alternative life unit is less than affected by climate change. Promotion of crops in the community that are resilient or can survive climate change. Install, provide equipment for timely and accurate data on weather and climate change for farmers, climate field school for all farmers, safety nets for the community, for farmers to sustain food that are viewed and well during extreme climate events. If you look at the ranking uh, for, for this uh, pro projects included in the proposed program, training and provision of uh, alternative life viewed is the most important among them for them, followed by promotion of crops, resilient to climate change, and uh, the installation provision of equipment for time and accurate data on weather and climate change farmers. The benefits uh, confirms their the projects that they deem in most important. Higher production, avoiding losses, just sufficient scientific knowledge on how to adapt farming to climate change, followed by farmers with enough scientific knowledge on climate and weather patterns and able to use this on their farm. So uh, this is the payment card. We presented this to the farmers after presenting them with a the question, how much are you willing to pay? And then maximum, the maximum amount that you are willing to pay. So actually that should be 10, 20, 30, 40, up to 200 or greater than 200. Now the farmers willingness to pay would fall between the highest amount that he or she stated and the next highest amount. So that is the interval where the true uh, valuation, farmer's valuation for the plant adaptation program falls. So this is the log linear model. And these are the result, this is these are the results of the interval regression analysis. And if you can see out of the the twelve uh, explanatory variables those with the stars are the significant variables that would be education, farm experience, farm science, knowledge about climate change, 
dami for farm ownership, dami for leaseholder, dami for access to credit and household income. And uh, one star would represent uh, significance at 10%, three stars at 5%, and three stars significant at 1%. So here you can see that uh, that uh, uh, it's really education and income that uh, uh, plays a big part in so to further explain, the higher the level of education, the more willing to pay more for climate change adaptation program. Less experienced farmers were willing to pay more for plant adaptation program. Why? Probably because farmers with less experience are more uh, receptive to changes. Or it's also possible that since climate change is risky, less experienced farmers to reduce uh, because they are risk averse they would want to, to have an adaptation program. Farmers with bigger land area have a higher willingness to pay. Uh, land area is a, an indication of wealth, so therefore, the higher the income, the higher would be the capacity to pay, so they are more willing to pay. Knowledge about climate change tends to increase willingness to pay, I think it's consistent. If you know more that is dangerous, you know more what is to come, then you would be willing to pay uh, more for adaptation. Land ownership tends to increase willingness to pay by 36%, but is moving by 0.27%. This just means that owners who want are willing to pay more for plant adaptation program than these owners. That is because they have bigger stake in their farms because they own the farm. Access to credit increases willingness to pay. I think the more financial resources you have, the higher is the uh, willingness to pay. Willingness to pay for plant adaptation increases with household income. I compared it with a linear model to choose a better uh, uh, model which one. And uh, these are the significant variables in the linear model, not transformed in natural algorithms. If you look at the number of variables, significant variables are only five compared to eight in the log log, uh, log, log uh, form. And uh, compare this to the number of regressors are the same 12, number of significant variables, 5 only for the linear model, and 8 is the log linear model. The consistency of the signs to economic theory both are consistent. And then uh, overall significance based on uh, this statistic, both are significant. But the goodness of fit, uh, that means uh, up to what extent would the uh, variables uh, for the regressors, explain the model. This is the, the or the uh, pseudo R squared. If you look at the linear model, slightly higher than the linear model. But we know that, uh, well, uh, it is bet, uh, we do not really, for, for this type of model, we do not really that put so much emphasis on the pseudo R squared. It's very difficult to, to interpret. And, uh, and uh, we usually, uh, Place more importance on the consistency to economic theory and the number of significant uh, regressors. So with that, I chose the, uh, I chose the log linear model over the linear model. So and for the uh, average willingness to pay, this is the average willingness to pay of farmers is 34.37 per month, and the median is 23.96 per month. Summary and recommendations, just a piece. 60% of farmers are relatively older adults with ages of 50 years and above. Except for one farmer, all respondents had formal education for an average of seven years. Average household size is four. Farming houses in general are not poor based on their income. Most of them perceive that the economy is more important than the environment. Majority have heard about climate change, but only a few are well informed about it. 61% believe the temperature has increased. 46% think the rainfall pattern has changed. Almost all of the farmers think that climate change is risky to farming. The most risky climate event for them are the past onset variables, extreme weather events such as the like floods and floods. They have used low onset variables such as increasing temperature and change in rainfall pattern to be, to be less risky. Farmers believe that climate change is not the most important environmental problem today as they think that people's economic needs should be prioritized. Farmers are Funds for environmental protection, 
They are also open to the idea of making cash donations for climate change adaptation programs, but they are opposed, however, to higher taxes to finance these programs. Out of 450 valid willingness WTP respondents see 91 are willing to pay. The two most cited reasons for WTP are concerned for the plan for climate change and affordability of the stated amount. The parametric mean, we know that already significant factors influencing influencing farmers what willingness to pay for plant adaptation are education, farm experience, farm size, dummy for climate change knowledge, and the two dummy variables for that tenure access to credit and household income. Trainings and provisions of alternative livelihoods that are less affected by climate change are the most important plant adaptation projects for farmers. The least important project is relocation for people affected by sea level. By sea level rise, again, it is consistent that farmers do not really see the need for adaptation for slow ports and variables such, such as change in temperature, sea level rise, etc. High production of sufficient scientific knowledge on climate change adaptation was the most important benefit of the proposed plant adaptation program. The least important benefit is increased ability of farmers to sustain livelihood, dwellings, and food during calamities. So farmers are convinced that climate change is more observable in slow onset variables. They know that uh, it's there. But they are more concerned with the fast onset climate change variables, droughts and typhoons, which they believe are more risky to farming. So as a result, this can lead to reactive and ad hoc adaptation measures that are biased towards a reduction of disaster risk from extreme weather events only. Uh, so, but we recommend update farmers and government leaders in the science of climate change and adaptation for them to understand and proactively address the equally risky adverse impacts of creeping climate change such as sea level rise and changes in temperature. This can be achieved through the climate field school, education and campaign, provision of technical assistance for farmers and attendance in national, international scientific professionals in workshop conferences and workshops, and climate change science for government officials in the More of most farmers are willing to pay for a plant adaptation program for climate change. Hence, a local financing scheme for a plant adaptation will probably have a high level of acceptability. One of the biggest challenges faced by everyone and probably most in the developing countries is how to finance adaptation. It has been estimated by UNFCC C Stern that, that it will cost so much to adapt to climate change and uh, developing countries just don't have the uh, resources. So here, the, the evidence of willingness to pay with that you can probably come up with a community-based small adaptation program. This is what I'm talking about. The collection method and fund management are crucial for, fund, for the fund to be successful. Since farmers are not amenable to higher taxes, the municipality can organize cooperative-like structure solely for the purpose of managing the adaptation fund under the Municipal Agriculture's Office, just like other organizations for example, pharmacies, fisheries, aquatic resource management councils. All plan or government-led adaptation programs for the farm farmers and municipality can be coursed through this organization. The farmers themselves can lead the organization and carry on an incentive-based collection method. Incentives can be in the form of rebates, for example, if you pay, you have any more services. And then lastly, recommendation for further studies. Now, the estimating willingness to pay for plan adaptation Using attribute based data reference techniques to identify what plant adaptation programs farmers prefer and will consistently pay for. Now, uh, just to explain briefly, the method that I use is limited in the sense that uh, it is bundled. So, when the farmer uh, stated, let's say, 20 pesos for the plant adaptation program, that includes all the projects within the program. But some farmers definitely would have preference for a particular project, like for example, uh, 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 scientific knowledge for climate change. Some would have a uh, higher preference for um, uh, promotion of uh, climate resilient crops. But that is not segregated in, in this type of study, because in the population information study, so it's recommend that uh, an attribute-based preference technique, one that will really show how farmers would be willing to pay for this type of uh, adaptation project uh, for its activities. So, so yeah. Thank you for your attention. Just would like to
Parish following this circa first sponsor meeting, we broke up the dissertation. We desire for providing partial funding for my dissertation. The advisor and members of my advisory committee, and of course the municipality of the Mangas, uh, the farmer responds. Thank you very much, Ms. Lee. So, um, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, Mr. Rico. Oftentimes, they 
they lose a lot of money because of uh, the calamities and so on and so forth. So it's like explaining what is the situation now. And then what the proposed climate change of the operation program. So these are the uh, projects. Now, as I said earlier, these projects are from the strategic uh, of the climate change adaptation plan uh, uh, published or uh, by DENR in 2010. And it's actually the plan for Visayas. So here, I just selected a few, uh, a few projects. And then here, uh, focusing only on the most important ones. Uh, relocation for people who will be affected by sea level rise, training for alternative life activities aside from farming, and uh, promote uh, uh, climate resilient crops, uh, install equipment, apparatus, and so on, so that farmers will have the data, timely data that they can use for. Um, that they can use for in deciding in their far, in farm decision making in climate field school. The climate field school is an important component because here you uh, I think it, it encompasses everything, even the uh, the promotion of uh, environmentally environment friendly farming techniques and so on. And then here uh, program safety nets. Uh, for farmers uh, to sustain their food, uh, livelihood during times of calamities. So the, the proposed projects actually addresses two factors, the long term, which are training, etc., and the short term that addresses uh, uh, fast, as one said. Okay, have you uh, included the possibility of insurance policy or insurance system to cover up the to cover for the risk or vulnerability faced by the farmers? Because in uh, animal uh, animal farmers are uh, we are trying to consider this in uh, promoting or uh, making adaptation programs for our farmers, although uh, the. Uh, uh, final uh, system of insurance has not been uh, arrived at yet. We are still planning to do this. Have you tried this? Thing? Yeah, actually, sir, uh, it is not included in the contingent valuation survey, but in my research, I uh, my dissertation, that's one of the recommendations the insurance, crop insurance. The problem, however, with crop insurance is very difficult to. Well, we see it's economically not viable because you have a very risky. Uh, so yeah, the, the the problem is that you have to have a, an insurance provider and at the same time uh, an insurance provider, and it's very difficult for um, private sector to come up with a climate or crop insurance because. Uh, so variable, it's so risky, and uh, so it's difficult to implement. They will not profit from it. So no private sector will provide that. So probably the government has do that. I, I heard plans of uh, variable insurance scheme, but I don't know how it works. But uh, but, in the, but it's true. The farmers of the, of the 520 respond among the 520 respondents uh, that we have interviewed. There are only there is only one who had crop insurance. 